will join as we begin. Uh, I'm Darren Adamson, one of the lecturers in the Sports Management Program, uh, the MBA program here at Torrens University Australia. And we'll look forward to talking about that a little bit later and sharing a recent experience where we had 13 students in Madrid. We also have with us uh, Bina Shah, a career and course advisor here at Torrens University. You'll be able to answer some of your questions in the chat regarding the MBA program. And of course, our guest speaker, uh, Professor Alfonso Ramirez, who I will introduce shortly. The format uh, for the session is for Alfonso to speak first regarding uh, the Real Madrid Football Club and his experiences there. And then I will speak about the Sports Management MBA program at Torrent University and uh, some, some photos and, and experiences from the recent trip to Madrid. And then a question and answer session where you can direct your questions to either myself or Alfonso. Uh, during the session, please feel free to uh, use the chat system there to connect with each other and uh, re share your, your thoughts and obviously your questions and, and Bina will respond to them when she can. So welcome again. We look forward to uh, this session, this masterclass session. Very fortunate to have Professor Alfonso Ramirez with us, uh, currently CEO of Arowana Sports. is a business that he has set up in 2016. Um, but before that, 14 years at the Real Madrid Football Club uh, from 2012 to 2016. Uh, heavily involved in commercial sales and for six years was head of international sales for that global football club. So I'm sure some amazing experiences and knowledge that uh, Alfonso will share with us now. So please welcome Alfonso, over to you. Thank you very much, Darren. Thank you, Bina. Of course, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, um, Torrens uh, University, Australia, for giving me the chance to be part of this uh, masterclass. Of course, I want to take the chance as well to thank the uh, University European of Madrid, where I also active teaching there um, in some of the MBAs they, they run. And, and of course, thank you very much to all the, the students today and all the people that uh, have the chance to, to share ta this time with, with me. And of course, uh, more than happy to, to really to, to transmit, to transfer all my these experiences that Darren already mentioned about my experience at Real Madrid and of course, as well, my experience within the last two years uh, uh, in this new project called Arowana Sports, okay? where, of course, I am very close to top football clubs, I mean, Real Madrid and uh, among others. Okay? So let's start the, the presentation, if Darren and Bina allows me. Okay? Um, first of all, just as a very short summary, as Darren already mentioned, I spent uh, since last two years um, we're working with top football clubs and competitions all over the world. I mean, I start the first two months in Spain, but of course I went to Premier League, to Serie A in Italy, to French League, to German League, among others. Uh, in the agency, we manage as well uh, top athletes. Yeah, just for you to know, and let's see if at the end of the session any of you has the idea, but few hours ago, let's say 14 hours ago, in this office, where I am right now in my office, a, a top football player that plays the last four Champions League of Real Madrid 90 minutes, 90 minutes. So only three players of Real Madrid play 90 minutes, okay, within the last four championships, European championships. He's been here yesterday with us, uh, signing a new, a new agreement and a sponsorship agreement. So, yes, for you to know, um, let me, let me, I don't know what happens here, but, uh, okay, let me tell you that uh, we manage also athletes, athletes from the point of view of the sponsorships and from the point of view of the communication. Also, we run events, as mentioned here. And this has been thanks, 
and and you I mean and you mentioned already Darren this has been thanks to Real Madrid so thanks to having the chance of being more than 40 years working for let's say the top football club in the world I mean today and and before that I also I had some experiences in in telco telco operators telco companies that has been very beneficial for my background as well today telco look at here until 2002 and you could all of you you can think about telco change and improved and innovate a lot within the last a few years um, so today telco is very very important i would love that any of you um, and my colleague and friend darren he has spent nine years in one of the best football clubs in australia so any sport property any sport football club any competition any football player if at the end we can recognize a football player as a sports entity as a brand we should ask why do my club exist why do i exist as a player what's my role in here okay this is a question that i would love any of you to answer about real madrid that i will give you the answer but any of you you can make about any of your properties you are thinking about you support uh, my property where are we coming from that's important as well to know my past okay what's my club size how big we are how big is my club what's my club assets how do we manage the club what's my club offer how digital era affects our proposal how digital era how digital affects to the way how fans football fans today they are consuming football i mean are you consuming football through the mobile are you consuming football through the tablet through the smartphone through the computer through my tv smart tv how so how technology today is affecting all of us i mean in my house i have a three i mean i have four kids i have to say that otherwise my my kids they will kill me but i have four children i mean and the, the third one that is two years old she gets my phone she puts my password four digits and then she goes to the app she likes it's amazing so digital era for sure is affecting so the future the challenge for the football clubs for the competitions is how can i be here the fastest and how can i monetize but let's go through the presentation of course i want to ask you if any of you has any question you can text we can stop we can uh, for sure if that happens I'm more than sure that we will not finish the, the presentation, but it doesn't matter. It will be very beneficial as well, so it doesn't matter. Um, just for you to know, um, any football club must be, must be managed according to, I mean, to the mission. Can you see my pointer, if I'm here with the pointer or not? Yes, good. So uh, this will be managed uh, according to the mission, vision and values. And I say this to these four football clubs, of course not. This is an example. It's any football club must has a very clear mission, vision, and values. Only a football club. No. If, if you are working in Coca-Cola, of course, Coca-Cola has a mission, a vision, and values. Uh, if you work for Procter & Gamble, the same. For any company today. And this example, as well, has been transfer to here and each football club has to count on the best organization team on the field and off the field and that's important and that's crucial really that's at the end the key to have the best on and off the field 
So from my experience in these 14 years at Real Madrid, I mean, you cannot imagine how lucky I was having the chance to work with the best people. Starting today by, of course, the president, the CEO of Real Madrid. The CEO of Real Madrid used to be the chief marketing um, officer of the club. So he used to be the boss of my boss. So imagine how lucky I am. And of course, very horizontal structure. So you could talk to everyone. At the end, the most important thing is, is the brand. It is the brand, Real Madrid brand. So it's to have very clear all these messages. So important, the mission, the vision, and the values, because it's funny. When, I'm, when I entered into Real Madrid, I only was worried my first year about helping to achieve the role of my goal, you know, what the club was expecting from me. I was in a marketing division, so they were expecting that the, the client satisfaction level could go to a higher level. So that was my challenge. And I didn't know, being honest to you, what was the mission of Real Madrid, the vision and the value. No, I only was worried about the client, the client satisfaction. But please, I need to, and all of us, we need to, to improve as, ourselves. And I had to improve as well. So before doing that, as answer to this question, why Real Madrid exists, well, where Real Madrid wants to be in the near future and what the values that Real Madrid represents today. So that's important. The other thing is, when we talk about the assets, who are the guys that they are playing football every day? Who are the guys that are playing basketball every day for Real Madrid? Because Real Madrid has football and basketball. I don't know if any of the students that you've been uh, in the white week of Real Madrid, uh, I think two weeks ago, or three weeks ago, maybe you are in this in this masterclass, maybe not, but I mean, it's football, basketball, of course. And and then here, always money, you know, money, money, money. I mean, money is, money is let's say, how much are we able to monetize things for doing the job done in the right way? So if we win titles, if we win uh, if we will, I mean, if we, if we get new fans, if we get new partners, if we get bigger audience of my club, of my brand, how can I monetize? And that's important today. Why? Because we are living in a, in a world that at the end, if you want to have a better property, you need to invest. If you need to invest, you need at the end to be able to generate at the end incomes, revenues. Okay, so <coughs> all together, all together in a circuit, in a circuit, and is is really important. So going to the next, thinking about the mission and about these four clubs that I mentioned before: Real Madrid, Barcelona, Manchester United, and 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 of course uh, Bayern Munich. Uh, all of them they have the same goal, that is winning, being number one in everything. It's amazing. Other clubs, the goal is to maintain in my first division. And that's the goal. Of course, in the highest position, but, but they know that it's, at the moment, impossible to win the title. I mean, at the moment, there is nothing impossible. We all need to fight to achieve our goals. Goals? in capital letters with a real and realistic goal. Who we are, what's my past, what other resources I have. Let's do, let's fight for the goal. Okay? And with a vision, clear vision. And of course, I will leave this presentation for all the students. Only the students, um, Kirsten, only the students that attendance today, okay? No, anybody else, okay? Please. <laughs> So, so this is um, at the end important as well. Where do we want to be uh, in a few years later? Okay, so it's important, not the short term, also the future. And, and it's funny because this picture is for you to know is Champions League. Yes, this is Kiev. And I, did, I put this picture before the final last Saturday. 
and thanks that the team that I used to work for, I'm very lucky that and uh, happy that they were. Of course, if Real Madrid uh, couldn't have achieved the title, Liverpool, amazing, amazing football they delivered this year, amazing as well, of course. We need to congratulate all of us, uh, Liverpool. And at the end of final, it's always, there's always a bit of luck. Okay, the player that plays 90 minutes last match, uh, that has been here yesterday with me, very humble. I mean, he said to me that they've been lucky, and for certain circumstances, they won. You know, so it's important also. The, the values of Real Madrid is to respect everyone as well, and as Liverpool to respect the, the, the club Real Madrid. So at the end, fair play in football is, is something also very important, the fans, the, the supporters. But without forgetting, the goal is to win Champions League final. And, and why? Because it's what my community deserves. The community. I mean, the community is I don't know what you think, guys, but I mean, for Real Madrid, is is the biggest asset they have, even more than the players, the community. So, and all football clubs at the end they work for the community to make them happy, because thanks to the community we exist. You know, thanks to the people that they buy my products, we can sell Coca Colas. Thanks to the guys that drink every day Coca Cola, Coke. Thanks to the guys that uh, they demand La Liga content. Thanks to that. Thanks to that in, in Australia, there's many fans, many guys that wants to follow La Liga, the broadcasters that bought the rights of La Liga in Spain, worldwide, they have a partner in Australia or in China or anywhere. So why? Because the community, because the fans, they like the way you play. They like the way you compete. They like the football you offer, okay? And that's, so the community is really important at the end. I mean, and from my experience, there's two, two, two moments, okay? There are two moments in football. From my experience, it's Real Madrid. Until 2001 and after 2001. I mean, before 2001, the way the club were managed is only focus on titles course, football clubs, I mean, football titles, basketball titles. Uh, the club was, I mean, primarily managed uh, and oriented as a sports company, sports entity, um, locally oriented to the fans, local fans, in case of Real Madrid, mainly in Madrid, people living in Madrid, members of the club, and the revenues, let's say 90% were the ticketing, ticketing, 90%. So mainly ticketing uh, was the main assets, the main um, no assets, the, the main incomes they should have. Of course, no brand research, commercially reactive, and only focus on sports results. And of course, with an amazing work done by the guys that were managing the club. So I cannot criticize negatively anything from the guys that were managing the club because they did an amazing thing. They won amazing titles. The only thing is that because of technology, because of the globalization, or let's say the, the world that we are living today, thanks to this technology improvement and innovative and innovations, um, today is easier for everyone to get closer each other. I mean, and for example, having this masterclass, unbelievable to do this a few years ago, and today is possible. Um, after 2002, and that was the moment I had the chance to join Real Madrid, and being honest, without any, any, any experience in football, more than a football fan. So I didn't know how to sell Real Madrid. I didn't know how we should um, approach brands worldwide. And we had to start by the beginning, preparing the, the proposals to approach uh, the potential partners of the clubs. First, 
steps locally, then in the region, then European partners, and then global partners. So we improve and we learn from our errors, from our mistakes a lot. And of course, with the challenge always to improve and to be better. And, and I don't want to pretend to, to, to give you, uh, any of you, any of my, my experience as a, as a, you know, as a must or as a, something that has to be like this. No, no, it's just from my experience, what I learned is that uh, every day we need to improve. Everything we do, we can always make it better. Always, always. I mean, this week for me, it's been amazing, amazing. I mean, thanks God and thanks to the people, the team I, I have the chance to work with in, my, in this company, amazing guys, amazing. I mean, they always deliver the best. They always are in a love, I mean, they are, if you ask them for giving 100%, they give you 200%, so that's amazing. And the responsibility of the companies is always to, to, re, to consider these things, of course. So my responsibility is to consider to my team. But this week, specific, this week has been amazing, not only because of the championship, the European Championship of Real Madrid, that I'm really proud because they are my colleagues and my friends and I spend many time, because also we have the chance to, to do an amazing partnership agreement, Asian, Asia Pacific agreement with, with uh, La Liga. Good. Also, we, we have good news. I mean, we did also a partnership with one of the players we work with. Let's say two, two athletes. One is NBA player and also a football player from Real Madrid. Also, today, a few, few hours ago, I, want, I, I, I text Lucas Vazquez. Lucas, I don't know if you will be seeing me, Lucas Vazquez, as you know, Real Madrid football player. Uh, he, he had a baby, his first baby. So, Lucas, congratulations if you are going to see me. I will hopefully meet you at the hospital before you have to go with the Spanish national team fighting for the World Cup. Okay. And of course, and I, we, we've been very lucky with, with some of, of yesterday evening project that we hopefully will launch in a few weeks. So, but for getting this achievement, there is only one ingredient, let's say one strength is work, 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 and hard work. And of course, always fighting for the goals, fighting for improvements, fighting for really is and never, never give up, never. And from the, if somebody, yesterday is true, yesterday a, a big top football club, uh, they said to us, impossible to do this partnership with you this year, but next year we want to do it. So, good. So, we need to also to accept many, many of the, of the failures, or let's say, uh, yeah, failures of the proposals we, we are working with that sometimes happens, but important to really not to give up, okay? Friends. Um, from 2002, uh, Florentino Perez, he really changed the model of organizing Real Madrid, not as a sport football club anymore. Of course, we are a sport football club. Sport football club, a non-profitable football club, but managed as a global enterprise, as a multinational with some subsidiaries, with some branches worldwide. Today, Real Madrid, they have one in Asia. They are working to have another one in the United States. They have read the one in, in Madrid, but globally oriented. Why? Because our funds, because our main assets are all over the world. I mean, Bina, Bina is Real Madrid supporter, I'm sure. Look at Bina face, I mean, Bina. Yes, thank you, Darren, of course. <laughs> I, and some of you, and some of you know, all of you, come on. Daniel, Fatima, James, Justin, Martin, Mohammed, Nathan, Ramasay, Ra, Ramasami, and, and of course many others. Uh, important to improve. And at Real Madrid, there is an amazing team improving all the time the assets they have. The assets, the physical assets they have, the stadium, the training facilities, 
the mega store. The mega store, what, what does it mean? The moment that any of the people goes to the Real Madrid mega store anywhere, at the stadium, at the center of Madrid, uh, in the Middle East, in any of Real Madrid shops they have there, we need the people to experience something different. It's not just going to buy the teaser. It's just experience Real Madrid. As an essence. So to see the goals, to listen the same as experience the same as being inside the stadium on a match day. So at the end is everybody's looking for the same, but we need to provide them this. Why? Because then this will make change the perception of the club. Also, if you go to Dubai to Real Madrid Mega Store, yeah, and if you have a good experience there, this will change your perception about Real Madrid as well. So we, everything is important. If you go to Real Madrid app, the perception you have is important for the club. If you get in and you leave in a few seconds, it's because you're not, you are not getting, probably. Maybe you are in a hurry and you have other priorities. It's important to know why you haven't spent enough time there. Um, brand research, very important. How is the... The consumer, consumer at the end, uh, or the fans' um, engagement with the club is important. How the people like my brand is important. How big is my brand is important. Commercially, proactive, of course. Proactive means what, what kind of partners we want to partner with. In 2002, when we started at the beginning, Anybody that wants to join us, please, thank you very much. But of course, today uh, there is a very, very clear strategy plan because uh, some brands cannot link to Real Madrid. Some brands cannot link to any football club today because maybe they will add very negative values to transfers or is that that will not represent what we want to, to be linked to. Uh, I will go a little bit faster. How digital era affects football industry? Any answer? I mean, everything. Affects everything. Because maybe I don't have to go, I don't have the chance to go to Madrid in, in the next few years to attend a classical match. But if, if I ask how is going to be football, how is going to be football in, in, um, in which way football is going to be consumed thanks to digital then let's see let's see because if i have an amazing screen a smart screen that cost to me 500 us dollar in my house amazing with a amazing sound sound that the technology and the 5k broadcaster gave me and because i have this connection and they allow me to be inside or very close to feel similar to that, then my perception with the match, with the players, it's going to be changed differently. And probably the engagement with this club or those clubs or those players will be completely different. And if the engagement and the perception of me as a, as a football fan is different and increase, probably this will affect automatically, directly in the club revenues structure. Why? Because maybe I will buy the t-shirt of my daughter, my son, my wife and myself. For what? For attending the next uh, football club uh, match, football match the next week. Probably, probably not. But, uh, and of course, gam gamification, sorry, and, and, and all the games you can play through the apps and the, play, the, the matches, the clubs they provide you today. Also, they are increasing the engagement through different targets, of course, you need to go. Um, so look at here how technology affects TV broadcasting rights. Look at Sky and BTS Sports. I had the chance to meet yesterday Sky, and also I met a week ago BTS Sports in the UK. I mean, they invest a lot at the Premier League. So that goes directly to the football clubs. Football clubs grow. Not only because of the revenues, because of the shares or the, the, the pounds they get because of the TV rights. They also increase because 
the, thanks to this international cycle as well and the incomes, many other countries they can see the, the, the Premier League as a, an amazing content in football. New media partners, gamification, mobile phones, digital apps, Amazon, WhatsApp, WeChat, YouTube, Netflix, I mean, many others, Samsung, LG, Apple, Sony, TV channels, telecom partners. So many, 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 many things are changing today. How big is my club? Come on, how many fans do we have? Real Madrid, the last figure, it's uh, more than 600, 600 million fans. How many fans does the club you support has? Because that will be the size of your club in terms of the fans you have. How big in terms of the people that follow you in the social media? We need to answer that. And today there are some figures that we can share together. And this, of course, thanks to the championship winning, Real Madrid increase and, and Liverpool as well. And the all top 20 football clubs in terms of revenues in the world today, look at the, the revenues they generate, amazing. More than 7 billion uh, in, in euros worldwide today. I mean, sorry, in 2015. And let's see here. And of course, today uh, is more, it's almost 8 million. So amazing. And look at here match day broadcast and commercial. So broadcast, the dark green is, oh my God, three minutes ago. The dark green is one of the biggest, it's true, or let's say it's the biggest. Then followed by commercial, and then the match day. It's amazing because in, in 2001, in 2002, in 2003, most of the football clubs, ticketing was the first one, ticketing. And now look at it. Why? Because digital era, of course. Digital is, is broadcasting and commercial. So almost 83%. 83% is thanks to technology that allows you and all of us to be here talking today about this. But when we focus only in the top four, top four is Man United, Real Madrid, Barcelona, and Bayern, top four on regards to the incomes. Because top four depends on what you are um, considering it will be Real Madrid if you consider Champions League, European Championships. If you talk about Spanish titles, it uh, uh, will not be Real Madrid, it will be Barcelona. If you talk about Man United, uh, it will be the number one regarding the revenues today. Let's see next year before. Um, but just exploring these four big ones and look at number one, let's see in terms of revenue, Manchester United, Look at here, commercial rights means for Man United, in terms of revenues, 48%. Amazing. Broadcasting, look at here, and look at here as well, the, um, the match day. So commercial rights is number one. And commercial rights means the brand. Means the brand. So the club itself, is able to generate almost half of the revenues they generate today. So they depend on themselves, meaning with that on their brand. Meaning with that, that without winning Champions League this year, last year, whatever, they almost have a very powerful brand. If we go to the structure, how they are organized, please, I will ask you the favor to have a look later on, but it's, it's also very specific. If we go to Real Madrid, look at 45% commercial rights and growing and growing. A 20% ticketing and of course broadcast, broadcasting. So ticketing, difficult to grow in any of these football clubs or in any football club, difficult because the capacity of the stadium will limit your growth. The TV broadcasting rights, it's also difficult to grow. Why? Because today the partners, the leagues they have, they are for at least three, four years' time, so it's difficult to grow. So the way they can grow is through the commercial rights, through new partners, through digital partners as well, um, etc. So if we go to the structures remedy, 
difficult to read, small, but also interesting. Barcelona, exactly very similar. And if we go to uh, also to Bayern Munich, look at Bayern Munich, almost 60% commercial right. Also amazing, amazing. So they depend on themselves to do this partnership, to sell the brand, to make the brand very valuable. But the brand is valuable if they have the community happy and big. If they don't have big community, you have no too many commercial assets to offer. Okay. Club main assets, the brand, the players, the fans, training facilities, the stadium, and of course the social media um, accounts and, and fans. Anything else? Oh, sorry, someone was. Okay, anything else? Anything else? And today I say, okay, also, as well, something else. We have to ask also the titles, the owners. The owners that will be forever, forever, and 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 Luka Modric, Luka Modric, for example, the best mid uh, midfielder, the center fielder uh, of the world, the best, I mean, midfielder of the world today. Uh, yesterday he was here and he said to me, Alfonso, we are so lucky. I mean, and so difficult that anybody else can make the same. It's so difficult. I mean, it's, it's almost impossible to win three champions, European champions in a row. It's impossible, but we did it. So, so lucky. And I asked Luka Modric, you must be very tired. How, what do you see, what do you think about the World Cup in Russia? He said to me, Alfonso, Croatia is ready for this, of course. We just need also a little bit of luck, or let's say luck. But so, how important, friends, is to pursue it, is to fight for it, is not to give it up, is to, to fight for your dreams. If you believe, if you believe in yourself and the team, you will get it. If you don't get it because other ones believe as well in the same as you and they had a little bit more lucky or whatever. Uh, okay, but we need to, to fight for So owners is also important. From my experience, Real Madrid is just ending. Um, we, we were very successful because we work in a very, very simple model. Four basic pillars, qualitative, premium environment, exclusive, and service oriented. So delivery, that's very important. We split the revenues in some 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 i mean this is scheme of of incomes very clear with making people happy in terms of awareness consideration purchase repetition loyalty it's important that the the purchase purchase funnel at the end that all of us we we learn from marketing is working as well in football but uh, and also it's, it's important to have the right portfolio of partners that we give you consistency um, in in really in in the in in your economic aspect will give you healthy will give you fresh air and these partners not only give you money also give you the chance to to build communication campaigns through them also with amazing good values they represent um, let me, this is our proposal in case of Real Madrid, players endorsement, brand awareness, advertising platforms, and of course, content generated. I mean, with something important, giving the people what they deserve. So why do we exist? Our mission is very important. Where are we coming from? Our past, what's my club size, fan revenues, how forced position yourself, the titles, what are my assets? How do we manage the club best talent people off and on the field? What's my commercial offer? Sponsorship rights, digital era, um, and of course, more than happy to be with you all of you again to explore deeply some of these uh, aspects if if uh, if you want. And I'm more than happy next time, Darren, when you come to Madrid to the white week, of course, to, 
to be with you and if possible to bring one of the players we manage uh, if it's possible as well to to be with you to say hello and to and also it would be great to that these players transmit to you how they feel a few minutes before during the match and at the end of the match and uh, what do they perceive from the fans from the stadium and and when they go back home many thanks and more than happy to to continue with the master class and i think darren you will also give us your lecture yeah thank you uh, alfonso um really appreciate that insight into the club that certainly uh, backs up what we saw in Madrid in terms of your passion uh, for the club and uh, the sport in Spain. Uh, that was very obvious. We, we think we're passionate in Australia, but the Spanish take it to another level. So really uh, appreciate your insight and uh, your focus there on commercial revenue. Um, you certainly know where the opportunities are going forward. And we, we certainly will keep a close eye on the club and, and watch it grow. And, I'll ask you a question at the end regarding the, the stadium because we know it, uh, it will be revamped in its current location over the next couple of years and perhaps we'll, we'll get your views on how to um, integrate commercial partners and technology into that stadium. Um, but thank you again. Um, we'll go to my presentation fairly quickly and uh, then we can get some questions back to uh, Alfonso. Uh, so my job really is to give a quick overview of the uh, MBA Sports Management Program at Torrens University. I know a number of the people listening are already students, so I'll be fairly brief and hopefully reinforce that you've made a very good decision. Obviously, Torrens University is uh, owned by Laureate. It's a international university, it's a private university, over a million students, 75 institutions, 25 countries, 64,000 employees. Laureate also own the university in Madrid that we have the partnership with. So it's because of our global business and our partnerships around the world that enables things like the partnership with Real Madrid Football Club uh, to come to fruition. That's the benefit of being part of a global network and a global institution like Laureate. Uh, we can make these partnerships uh, come to life. Our promises to you, uh, the students, everyone is connected, everyone is global, everyone can change their world, everyone is unique. We are really big, but we treat every student individually. We have significant support systems in place for every student. They are connected. Uh, they have access to the best technology and of course it's really important that we take a global focus because uh, the sports industry is global, Laureate is global and there's some significant opportunities there for you as a student but also once you graduate. Why study at Torrens? Well it is very flexible. Uh, at the moment the MBA is available online uh, but we have support in Adelaide, Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane you still have access to the campuses, you can use the resources there, you can tap into the support uh, at those campuses at any time. Um, we keep our classes small, we love interaction, um, we have uh, weekly collaborate sessions online similar to this but certainly a lot more interaction from the students and of course you can be really flexible with your choices, you can study part-time, full-time, you can fast track your MBA there's no reason why you couldn't complete it in two years if that was your choice. But we also know a number of students are working full time and studying at night and uh, really taking their time to, I guess, uh, embrace everything that the MBA provides. The learning experience is quite unique. Uh, as I said, you do uh, have access to the campuses if you like. Uh, most students that I'm aware of are, are studying one subject at a time. As I said, they're balancing their study with family and work commitments. So it's about a 10-hour commitment per week, um, including time online with your lecturer and your students, uh, collaborate sessions, uh, commitment to discussion forums and other online activities, and then, of course, your weekly readings and your assignments. It's about 10 hours a week uh, per subject. 
and uh, we have a trimester so you can study uh, three subjects at least per year plus we have some other options if you need to fast track the NBA sports management program well you certainly know about the partnership with the Real Madrid football club uh, Real Madrid have a graduate school I'll show you a photo later with uh, Emilio who is the general manager of that school and very accessible when we are in Madrid a fantastic person that sees us on day one and also presents our certificates on the final day uh, why did we join with that graduate school well they've got one of the best MBAs in the world um, Torrens University decided that uh, rather than start from scratch let's join one of the best in the world and so that's what we've done since uh, 2015 and we have access to people like Alfonso and the professors in Madrid and of course staff from the Real Our Madrid Football Club and we met many of the uh, staff while we were in Madrid and uh, many of them of course were, were senior managers reporting to the, the CEO and uh, they were fantastic with their time so because of the partnership students will graduate with a joint degree from both Torrens University and the Real Madrid Graduate School that is connected with the Universidad Europea which is great news and of course you know most of us in our sporting life uh, would love to travel and because of the, the structure in sport where we have international federations uh, managing national federations um, those travel opportunities are, are certainly available and if you get into um, you know the club world or event management then there's certainly significant uh, travel opportunities for you we have three intakes February June and September so our uh, second intake is kicking off next week uh, week one trimester two so we have three trimesters three intakes you can join at any time uh, if you are listening and, and thinking about joining uh, if you can make it next week we would find a way to make it happen uh, if not, uh, we certainly have another intake in September. So you certainly don't need to wait until February of next year. As I said, it can be completed two years part time if you uh, want to fast track it. But there's certainly no pressure from us. You can take your time. It's delivered online, plus the, uh, the one subject in Madrid where we travel, uh, the immersive experience, which I'll talk about very soon. Uh, the online discussions and collaborative sessions allow us to meet uh, professional staff and lecturers from around the world uh, the person there in the uh, in the photo sitting at Ian Esther's locker at the Spanish Football Federation is a Javier donor one of our lecturers uh, he takes the subject on facility operations which we study in Madrid and uh, we spent substantial time with him and he is just an expert in, in facility design and operations so the 12 subjects that make up the MBA six are delivered by Torrens uh, five by the University of Madrid and there's a field project of your choice where you do a, a real life project for a sporting organization it's an immersive experience in Madrid there's the 13 students uh, every one of them graduated so that uh, certainly uh, ticked my KPI we, we took 13 we came home with 13 and they had a certificate so that's fantastic that's on the the surface of the uh, Real Madrid Stadium and it is immersive it's a really busy two weeks the students have to study and complete assignments uh, while they are there um, long days uh, the Sun stays up very late in Madrid and we maximize the daylight um, and also obviously a little bit of night activity uh, you are um, accessible you know to everything in terms of presentations workshops case studies facility tours site visits we see some live sport there's coaching clinics networking group work and cultural exchange so it was, it was amazing for our 13 students to get to know each other now, obviously being online students they had uh, met online but never face to face so fantastic just for them to get together and meet fellow Australians uh, but then in Madrid they had uh, opportunities to meet another uh, close to 300 students from around the world that were being hosted at the same time so it is a cultural exchange it's a immersive experience with a 100% content focused on sport so anybody that loves sport obviously uh, will, will, will gain significantly from the, from this trip uh, I'll just take you through a few photos and then we'll um, get some some questions um, so the classroom uh, if you're following me on LinkedIn uh, please uh, have a look at what I 
posted there, um, but that is a photo on the left of the outdoor classroom. So 300 students sitting in the VIP seats in the stadium watching presentations for four days. And um, some of the days went from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., but uh, it was just fantastic. Every session was, was really good. And not just football, but obviously basketball is significant in Spain. Uh, Real Madrid winning the uh, football and basketball European Championships uh, recently. And just the quality of the people and their passion when they speak um, and the quality of information provided, it's, it's amazing. Uh, I've got pages of notes that I now need to uh, integrate into some of my lectures. Um, just amazing content and uh, delivered in a really good spirit. Um, and of course, we were watching the wonderful uh, guys mow the lawns, uh, Alfonso, preparing for the, the next home game, which was amazing. The, the time they put into preparing that strip is, is fantastic. So I can't say enough about the football club. We had a complete um, open door policy and some of the other photos there. You see the change rooms, you do a stadium tour, you see the museum. Uh, it is a subject focused on facility operations, so you get a really good feel for the VIP areas and, and how they service their sponsors, how they welcome them into the club and the match day experience that they do provide those partners that are contributing significant amounts of money to the club. Uh, and we were there four days for, for lectures and workshops, but another three days for tours and meetings and lunches and all sorts of things. So. Yeah, the hotel uh, was very close to the stadium and, and we were walking there as, as much as possible to, to make the most of that opportunity. Um, we were also very fortunate, and this wasn't open to every student, but they really looked after the Australians. I think we asked a lot of questions and they, they were really happy to look after us. Uh, we went to the uh, training venue, which is new and close to the airport, uh, 13 pitches, indoor stadiums for both the football and basketball, um, as I said, close to the airport to allow their elite athletes to travel without fuss around the world. Also houses the offices now for all the staff and the Real Madrid Foundation. So many of the staff now have moved out of the stadium and are located here. And of course, it's got all the uh, facilities needed for academies, uh, junior teams, elite athletes, medical um, rehabilitation, training facilities. Just fantastic, and it keeps growing. They've got uh, more land out there to um, to keep expanding. So we look forward to seeing that again at some stage, and just keeping an eye on that in terms of a training facility. Interestingly, uh, we spent some time with Atletico Madrid, and it was really good to compare the two clubs. Obviously, they have a really strong rivalry. Uh, the students' assignment was focused on the new. Wanda Metropolitano Stadium. It's only been open for 12 months. It, it uh, cost uh, 300 million euro to build. It's the new home of Atletico Madrid. And of course, uh, being a, a subject focused on facility operations, it was important that we have a look at the, the most recent stadium in Madrid. Um, so we went there for a tour and had access to some of the staff and could see exactly what they were delivering in terms of innovation and technology in a new stadium. Um, and of course, we could compare that to the Real Madrid Stadium, which uh, is a little bit old, but um, so there are substantial plans in place to, to renovate that stadium. Um, they've decided they don't want to move. They love the location, and so they will upgrade over the next couple of years without having to, uh, to move any home games, um, which is a really smart decision. So we're able to compare the, the very new with the historic, I guess, and um, that really helped the students uh, with their assignments. So that's the, an outside picture of the Wanda Metropolitano. It's at a location that's a little bit out of the city and it was actually the location uh, that was going to be home to the Madrid Olympics if they were successful in their Olympic bid. Uh, unfortunately, they were unsuccessful and so the land has now been used for this amazing stadium. And uh, the students decided to, to actually buy their own tickets. They wanted to see a, a Atletico Madrid game. They purchased uh, VIP tickets for 120 euro uh, went to the VIP hospitality, enjoyed the food and drink, and, and sat there with with 40,000 odd fans um, on that particular day. So these were the um, experiences open to students. Obviously, uh, in Madrid, very hard to get a free ticket, Alfonso, but uh, the students were certainly uh, happy to pay and, and see the stadium come to life, I guess, uh, during a game. 
Some other activities, we saw Real Madrid play basketball you know, in a really unique stadium. Um, and then we also were fortunate that while we were there in May, it was the Madrid Tennis Open. Uh, again, another purpose-built stadium for tennis. They call it the magic box. It does look like a box, and when it rains, that, uh, that roof simply slides over like a, a lid on a box. Um, so these are some of the unique experiences that will be available to students. Obviously, it depends on when you travel. Um, we don't know when the trip will be next year. It could be any time between February and May. So it will depend on which basketball, football games are on the program. It will depend on whether there is uh, tennis, obviously, at that time. But we found that Madrid has so much more in terms of sport, uh, cycling events, um, and significantly other events that we can tap into. So I don't think the timing is, is that important um, as long as uh, you know, we can get dates early and plan for some of those events that are on the calendar. The students got active, which was really important. So on the left, we went to a fencing facility, purpose-built fencing facility, and uh, practiced our fencing for the first time. And on the right, we went out to one of the regional basketball academies, um, one of the best academies in Madrid in terms of uh, nurturing young talent and uh, providing a pathway to the elite level. Um, the interesting thing about the fencing, our coach was uh, Madrid's only ever uh, Olympic medalist in fencing. He won the bronze medal in fencing and uh, took us for a two-hour coaching session. Um, in both of those photos, we have students from other universities from around the world. So a really good opportunity to network with other students and, and get some physical activity into the program. Probably one of my highlights, uh, the Spanish Football Federation. So another facility um, where the Spanish teams go to prepare for international competition. So the Spanish team will be there now preparing for a World Cup. All the academies use this uh, facility as well to prepare for their global uh, or international competitions. On the left, a, a purpose-built hotel where the players can stay and obviously get the best uh, of comfort while they're preparing for those events. But also, you know, plenty of uh, outdoor and indoor pictures, medical facilities, rehab facilities, indoor football facilities for male and female sides to prepare um, to the best uh, of their abilities, I guess, for those global events. On the right, uh, a museum that captures everything about Spanish football. And of course, the Spanish had a really successful period from 2008 to 2012 when they won the World Cup for the first time and a couple of other European trophies. Um, so fantastic to see that, that facility and you know the passion that the Spanish have for football. So that's it. I had uh, I think I took 2,000 photos in two weeks, so I've tried to find the very best there, <laughs> and it's going to take me a few weeks to sort the rest. Um, that's the university in Madrid. We spent two days there as well. Um, and the students, every photo I have of the students, they're just beaming. Um, we were certainly tired, and uh, they certainly felt it by the end, but they were absolutely beaming every day and just completely uh, loved that experience. And um, they're still communicating. They set up a WhatsApp, uh, obviously, network to communicate, and they're still sharing stories and photos. Some of them have stayed over in Europe, um, either in Madrid or London. Um, to see if any work opportunities pop up while they are there. So they haven't booked a return ticket as yet. They're using this as an opportunity to, to see Madrid and see if any other um, employment opportunities are available uh, in Europe. Um, so we certainly will stay in contact. Uh, some of them will graduate later this year and we'll certainly support them in that uh, next step of their career journey. So I'll take a break. I'll catch up with what's on the chat. Is there a question? It looks like um, Daniel Norton is waiting to ask a question. Do you want to um, use the chat, Daniel, or speak to Alfonso? Darren. Hello? Hello. Hello. There is a OK, there is a question that uh, through Emma, uh, a student is asking about the, during the week, the, the white week you've been in Madrid, um, all the time the pictures, uh, and everybody's talking, I mean, um, about male, okay? Male football in, with male, and I mean, and basketball with men and everything. It's, it's true. I mean, historically, Real Madrid has been always 
I mean, uh, a football club, and they don't have the female division, they don't have the women division, okay? It's something that the club is concerned and is working on it. Uh, women football in Spain grows a lot, so the improvement is amazing. My old daughter, nine years old, plays football better than me, better than me. So, and she's only nine years old. Football is improving a lot, but it's true that why we mostly talk about May because about the audience. The, the, the problem today, the, the size of football today because of May is huge if we compare with women, with women at the moment. Uh, but of course, it's, it's, women is changing. Uh, I remember when I used to go to a football match stadium, 85% uh, were men and only 15 in the past used to be women. Right now it's more equal. Spain. Uh, so uh, it's changing a lot. So, uh, but it's true that uh, because of the figures, because of the audience, uh, the, and the, this predominancy is like this. Of course, we should have done, or maybe in, in the near future, we can do another session about women football improvement. How is it changing? I think it's very necessary and really interesting. I have some examples as well and friends that today a big brand that they are investing a lot in women football um, let's let's uh, work on it okay i mean it would be more than happy but today with this master class we didn't have so much time but uh, let's see in another in another chance we can we can of course but it's growing and I'm very proud of, of women football of course and can can i just add that um you know some of our highlights certainly involved women athletes. When we went to the, the tennis, we were fortunate to see the, the, the highest ranked Spanish female tennis player play and it was a full house and to see the crowd get behind her, unfortunately she lost to a Russian, but uh, fantastic experience. Um, also one of the best guest speakers I think was Ruth Beta. Um, I not, hope I pronounced that right, but she won the high jump uh, gold medal at, in the Olympics in the high jump at the age of 37. So she retired and then came back as a 37 year old and won the, won the high jump um, and uh, gave a fantastic presentation. So there's certainly other experiences available during the two weeks and it wasn't all football and basketball. Um, there were certainly other presenters that spoke about other sports. Um, so yeah, I can share some of that with you offline if, if you need it. Was Daniel Norton asking a question? Oh, I can, can you hear me, Darren? Yes, mate. Yes, go. Oh, beautiful. Alfonso, thank you very much for your presentation. That was outstanding. So thank you for that. Thanks, Darren, for your presentation. A pleasure, a pleasure, Daniel. Alfonso, I work at a club. Actually, I, I, um, the same club that Darren used to work at, uh, the Port LA Football Club. And, uh, we just played our second game in Shanghai, and, um, which is a very, very big step for the ASL. My original question was, um, and I know you answered it briefly, but what's the broader strategy um, for Real Madrid in terms of um, connecting in China and Asia more generally? Okay, there is some, there is some already, um, and thank you for your question, Daniel, and thank you for, for your words. Um, Real Madrid in China, specifically in China or in Asia, at the end, there's, let's say there's some, some plans, already, okay? And there is a strategy. First is we need to provide the right and the best content for the community over there in China. So it's been creating the, the the social media platform, Weibo. I mean, all the Chinese or all the local ones, the national ones, to be ready. So we already had to partner with each of them and to create the right and the best platform there to to increase the, the community. The second is also to partner with um, with football in the in the at the community there in China through. The Federate Chinese Federation through university, through school, schools, through other football clubs. 
So I had the chance to enter into an agreement in 2000 and, uh, let's say, 10 or 11 with one Joe Evergrande. That is the one that is leading the, the championship, the Chinese Football League there, Super League. So entering into partnership with the local community through the clubs, also creating academies, also getting close to the fans. So at the end, you need to give them knowledge to get close. Of course, it's important that the content, the broadcasting rights, is being seen there. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. come in the rest. What else? To do partnerships. I had the chance to partner with two big brands there, leaders in their sectors, local brands, Chinese brands. They are expanding. And one is Ely. This is a daily product. It's milk and derivates. And they are number four worldwide today. Number four. And it's a very, very new brand company. And, and number four worldwide because the size of the country. So through these partners, what we are, what Real Madrid is doing is building in another way the brand, Real Madrid, to get close to the fans, to the community. So there are different pillars, different ways to establish and to connect with the society, with the community. Also, you can imagine friendly matches and tours. Why Real Madrid, through ICC, relevant sports, they did the partnership for getting close to the fans. They went to Australia, they went to China, and, and it, this is something also that the football clubs, and a question of some of your colleagues says about what do I think about Australian football clubs and Australian football is increasing, and I think it will be interesting to interact and to exchange football experience. How? Play football, coming an Australian football club to Europe and to play against a European club in a European stadium with the European fans and doing this because otherwise it's, it's difficult to grow internationally. So for letting the people know in June, first of all, get close to them. Content, TV matches, social, digital, creating partnerships with brands there locally, giving experience to their fans, and then of course with the community, with the social program, academies, football class partnerships and, and, and friendly matches and tours. Any others? Thank you. Thank you. So it's all about building communities, you, basically. Yeah. Danny, come to Madrid next time. Come to Madrid. I mean, I am really, I think, I think if, if Torrance University invites me, I was impressed about a Darren's uh, program in Madrid. I was really impressed. So Wanda Stadium, Santiago Bernabeu Stadium, training facilities, Spanish National Federation, Basketball Arena, Real Madrid. I mean, and Santiago Bernabeu Stadium tour, of course. And I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I will join next time, for sure. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Alfonso. Um, look, we'll certainly take a couple more questions if anybody's got them um, so while we're waiting my question around the stadium we saw some photos of the daniel you might just need to mute your microphone i'm oh, sorry sorry, okay. sorry, sorry, sorry. how do i do that can we mute daniel somehow yes thank you i think that's better um hope you can hear me um, yeah, Alfonso, we saw photos of the, the new stadium that you want to redevelop over the next uh, two to three years, um, and it looks amazing, and uh, obviously you don't want to move, and uh, you want to retain the capacity of 80,000. They said they didn't want to get bigger, they just want to make it better for the fans. So I guess for someone like you that is looking to bring in commercial partners, particularly focused on technology and innovation, it must be a great opportunity. Okay, Darren. Darren and, 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 all, and, and all, all, all the guys and I mean, all the people that is attending. I mean, I, I know a lot of things about Real Madrid because I spent there for many years and I'm still working very close to them in some partnerships, friendly matches, players, with many things. But it's true today, I am Arowana and Arowana is a company that is working with, with Real Madrid, with Barcelona, with Atletico de Madrid, with, with 
Manchester United with Tottenham with top football clubs. Also, we work with Real Madrid players but, and with some others from other clubs. So, I have the privilege, really, within these last two years of the existing of the company, we did many friendly matches for top football clubs worldwide, abroad and in Madrid and in Spain, in the south of Spain. So, I'm very, very proud of this. Um, and I had the chance to visit many, 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 many amazing stadiums worldwide. Amazing. Uh, answering to your question, Darren, technology is important. It's, 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 it's investing, investing in your main asset, apart from the players, okay? The asset, let's say, Santiago Bernabeu Stadium, physical asset, okay? The stadium is important. Why? Because when you guys go to a football match, the important thing is not all, I mean, it's the 90 minutes of the match, of the game. Of course, that's important. But the way you feel those 90 minutes, the way you entertain with the match is important. So, from the moment you enter into the stadium, from the moment you listen to the hidden, from the moment you see the players, from the moment you see the LED system, from the moment the stadium can be covered, from the moment the giant screens at the stadium, the video world. Maybe you can see amazing 3D digital images from the moment the match allows you to interact within the match, with the Wi-Fi, with the technology, with everything, even with the experience of having a hamburger or a snack or whatever, sitting and only requesting it maybe the day before through the app of the, of the match of the club. So, as far as I know, and, and when I was at Real Madrid, the, the club invested a lot in different partnerships with Cisco system. Cisco allows the club to provide the fans Wi-Fi to everyone. Wi-Fi allows you to connectivity without paying extra whatever. Also through Wi-Fi and uh, through the match club application, you can get access to different cameras video cameras inside the changing room, inside the tunnels player. You can see what the players are feeling one minute before the match. If you connect to the app, if you connect to the app, you are generating, you know, a loyalty engagement within the member, within the guy that is watching the match, inside the match. Only this app will go for these people attending the match. So if you are at home, you will have this access so with the club wants to 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 give a price or to put in the right position to those guys that went to the match if you want to repeat if you want to also to have the chance to interact with the players with the chance to see the players before or after the match you have to be there so everything around the match everything that the technology can allow and also from the moment you are sitting into the chair of the match, it's important. So the club is investing in this. And winter, some of the seats are quite cold. The club is today working on an innovative system of having each single chair warm. But nobody feel really cold. So at the end, it's important that you say, oh my God, what I'm really experiencing here today is amazing. Because if you think that, I will tell my colleague Bina, Bina, please, if you come to Spain, make your trip happen on a match day at Bernabeu. Because as I know you like football, you must experience this. This is my gift for you, Bina, to come to Madrid and I invite you to experience the match. And I do the same to my, and Bina will do the same maybe to her, to her friend, Darren, uh, to do the same. And at the end, because we live in a connectivity world, so a demanding world. If Real Madrid does this, tomorrow Barcelona will try to improve and to do the same. And for the tour of Bernabeu tour, for the restaurants you have there, the choices, everything. So Darren, the new era for Real Madrid, the new stadium today is very nice. The stadium is very well, it's amazing, well located at the center of the city. But what is coming? for the next three years time and the investment is going to be amazing for 
any of us really it's going to be amazing and i guess not only real madrid many other football stadiums because i mean the, the investment and the improvements are really at that level so it will not be the same as today thank you certainly appreciate that and some of those ideas um, we hear about we haven't seen in australia yet so we certainly um, look forward to seeing how that eventuates um, is there any other questions from from the people that are listening i've uh, exhausted my questions is there anybody that would like to take this opportunity either via chat or to speak to alfonso I think, uh, Darren, they, 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 they want to come to Madrid and lively, they want to make the questions to me, you know. Sure, sure. They're waiting to get on the plane and they're going to meet you face to face, I think, in Madrid. Um, okay, do you oh. worry that the digital era may also be disrupted to the actual physical games? Um, uh, Bina, it's true, there are some people, I mean, at the club, and that's why I said, how fans are going to consume football live at home, because it's maybe even better, because the problem we all have is the same everywhere, everywhere. It's time. We have a problem. We don't have enough time. We are very busy at job, I mean, at work, you know? We don't have enough time to stay with the families, with the friends. Uh, so I guess for any of you, unless you make a trip, a holiday trip or business trip to Spain, to Europe, you will not have the chance to attend a match. So it's difficult to experience Santiago Bernabeu football match. But uh, digital era will be disrupted. I mean, I think the stadiums will be always full because the capacity of the stadium is only limited maximum to 100,000 seats. So will be amazing digital area to increase the, um, the quality and the engagement of the people to the matches and making everyone's satisfaction. Because probably um, some of you can only get access to football competitions, football leagues, through paying extra uh, to your TV TV uh, provider, but uh, very soon through this will be probably included in the package without paying extra. So this will change the, the, the final picture of the um, TV rights in football for the benefit of the audience at the end, for any of you. And at the end as well, for the benefit of the best ones, of the best ones that provide the best football. And hopefully, we, and please, uh, it's important not only the top football clubs, that they are the biggest one generating incomes. Also, if we want to have the best leagues, we need everyone. So starting from the first club till the 20th in the Spanish league, in the first one till the 20th in the Premier League, and in the same leagues, each of them are really important. So without uh, any doubt. So football, is not only the biggest one, it's football is important everyone, okay? And we could talk about the academy, youth programs, we could talk about the way, different ways to, to prepare, we can talk about the football agents, how they uh, affect into the football industry, we can talk about many, many other aspects that uh, today I am experienced every day in my office. We can talk about how to improve the perception of each football athlete or football player or any athlete in general uh, through the sport they practice and also through the of the sports what they do in terms of social media how do they interact so there are many things but uh, let's leave something for next session then next time we we of course will be very fruitful and um, and um, what else? What else? Uh, we can make Luka Modric join into the the webinar. 
because he's leaving in five minutes. He was calling me, but I cannot take Luka Modric uh, on the phone because of you. But uh, he's leaving to join the <clears throat> Croatian national team. So uh, let's give Luka all the luck and the rest of the players, all the luck, all the best. Uh, any other question? Now, we've certainly got some students interested in women's sport and it's really taking off here in Australia. Um, and after, after many years, our women athletes are now becoming professional athletes and being paid reasonable salaries. Um, still a long way to go to catch up to the men, but it is changing and improving. And I just made the point that, you know, the NBA program is about exploring future opportunities in sport. And there's a massive op opportunity in Australia to align yourself to women's sport and women's sporting teams and you can shape the assignments any way you like to really um, set yourself up I guess to specialise or to focus on a particular area of the sports industry so anybody that's listening uh, to this session I'm happy to have those conversations later um, by email or phone um, that's what I'm here for to, to really help you uh, make the right decision in terms of your MBA and, and your career going forward so Lecturing is, is just a, one part of the role. Um, look, uh, Alfonso, it's been fantastic. I can tell from the comments there that, that people are really happy with the information you've provided. Um, look, when the World Cup starts in, in Russia, we will still be supporting Australia, but we'll have a very, very close eye on Spain. And <laughs> we wish you well. Are you, will you be there? The colors are red and yellow, so this is for Spain. Um, and of course, all the best to, to all of you and Australia, and of course, uh, in general for football. I mean, we all expect to, to enjoy and entertain all of us. Amazing. And, and being honest, I mean, thank you very much for, for Torrance University for giving me the chance to be with, with you. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Mina. Thank you as well. Uh, all the people that makes this uh, MBA amazing MBA uh, possible and of course uh, for all of you um, students and, and uh, our attendants today I mean all the best we are we all are looking for the same is uh, the happiness of each of us uh, so dedicate your time please your time uh, when you start from Monday till till Friday, if you have to work also during the, the weekend. Uh, dedicate your time in what you in your passion, in what you like, in something that you add value and feel because at the end you all of us we need to feel really uh, uh, well with what we do. And and of course I provide you my email, uh, anything I can help you or if I have the chance once uh, uh, to travel to Australia, it will be amazing to, to visit, of course, the university and, and have the chance to, to be with you, of course, and, and to, meet, to meet in person with, with you. Preferable, Darren and, and Dina at summer, okay, not at winter, okay? <laughs> I'll, be hoping, I'll be hoping to be on the next trip, but I need to improve my Spanish, so. Okay, you will, you will for sure. So, I hope so. Thank you. Muchas, thank muchas you. gracias. Muchas gracias. Thank you. And hope to see you very soon. Okay? Thank you. All the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you to you. everybody else for listening and uh, participating. And certainly stay in touch with myself or Bina if you would like more information. Um, thanks again. We'll speak soon. Thanks, Bina. All good? We'll catch up.